little man. Hello. Hello. Oh. Wow. Late at How? night. How are we all doing? How are you guys Pretty doing? Good. I feel like Pretty I'm great. always just, you know, not, not, am I striking late? Striking I last? So. I, I, I believe it is late. The timing's just so. It's got to be late for you. I'm I'm sleepy and you're in the future, you know. That's true. true. We live in the future. Mm-hmm. I think we, as long as we're striking with an L, we're doing something right. right. I mean, on a, on a yeah. technicality, mm-hmm. wouldn't Mason and I, being on the West Coast, always be striking later than you? So we're striking latest. Right. That's true. That's true. You guys are like, <laughs> shut up. Let's keep going. Get over that. Yeah, let's, this let's, is like let's my hide third that. job today. Crawl I just over this that shame. I just came Put from my second away. one doing a theater company gig. <laughs> I, you know, it's, it's, anyway. Well, that, that's, the ma- that's the magic of Always Strikes Late. Because yeah. by the time we all get here, like every host, every guest host, yeah. everyone's brain neurons have had a journey. They've been immersed in different mm. baths of sensation, the things they've had mm-hmm. to deal with. Nothing's got to be normal. That's where the magic comes from. That's yeah. right. It comes from. This is raw, the mental, authentic. yeah, mm. mental massage at the end of the day <laughs> before we coax ourselves to our sleeping quarters. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> so, uh, I'm Matt, one of your humble hosts, along with Jack Rocco, and today. he's your boy that guy i am your boy but uh, today we got mason on and uh, we've had mason mason Knox on before uh Mm. he just took my orc on pork Mm -hmm. out to explain to those poor you know um meta chasers that orc on pork can be Devastating, and that's with a U N at the end. Right, right. I yeah, kept walking yeah. around going pork, 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 pork. pork, pork, pork yeah, pork, pork, it was pork. hilarious. Now, yes. Now the first time that Matt brought out the orc on pork to a major tournament foray, he neglected to bring like a cooler filled with bacon or like uh, pork roll or something. We did talk about yeah, it afterwards, right. yeah. so I don't know if you did any of that, but I'm hoping. Uh, no, you yes. I. <laughs> but guys, I oh, hold on, up. guys. Wait, wait. What for those that are new or listening or just you know from Michigan and just chilling right now? What is the orc on pork? What what is this faction? Are we Iron Jaws? Uh, bone are we splitters. Cool boys? Bone I was splitters. playing bone splitters. Sap orcs, green it's, skins. It really should, many names. Yeah, it really should be naked orc on pork, right? That's mm. true. And naked most orc of them on are naked, naked pork. Naked yeah. orc on naked pork. Yeah. And think about uh Ser- Seraphon, right? It was dinosaurs yeah. are riding mm. dinosaurs. Now yeah. it's it's not quite that. It's way different and weirder. Mm. And it's bone splitters. Okay. Ooh, naked yeah, on bakey. Naked yeah. on bakey. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I think for some of the newer <laughs> listeners who might not have like part of the dim mists of time to see these guys mm-hmm. in like the old world where they yeah. originated you yeah. have to envision like a standard gore grunta and imagine like a young toddler son riding around on an equally <laughs> young pig yeah let's have like a lot of those and that's pretty yeah, much with a the spear army. in its hands too yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it came also, from the jungle yeah also they all have tattoos right and because yeah. of that mm-hmm. that gives them six up word army wide six up word because the tattoos it works right it's like similar to yeah. the 40k orcs like mm-hmm. they think yeah. it and it does it right so they're Not quite powerful in that anymore. regard but you gotta yeah. believe mm-hmm. yeah um but yeah I, it was a ton of fun um i i do, i decided i wanted to play beast of chaos and bone splitters at least once before they go away in June because they nice. are retiring both those armies, right? So yeah. um, I have played Beast Chaos quite a bit, so I wanted to start with Bone Splitters. I actually played one of my very first practice games of Fourth Edition against Bone Splitters, and we no. played some rules wrong. But I was like, "That's dope! Like that's cool! I want to do that." Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then I, you know, I did flirted with Night Haunt or whatever mm-hmm. for a little bit, and then I was like, "Okay." Matt, here we go. Give give me those piggies. And so I I played them for a couple of weeks going into the tournament and I felt really good about playing them. Honestly, you know, I was like, man, this is in some test games that I did. I was like, wow, this does exactly what I want. You know, I knew what my weaknesses were Mm -hmm. and I felt like I had practiced and prepared enough actually to Mm -hmm. do well into those 
And then the stuff that I was really good against, it was just going to be like oppressively strong. And people are going to be like, I've never even seen that army before. Like what yeah. exactly <laughs> is happening right now? So yeah. that, that was my goal. You know, that's fun for me, and, but I'm, I'm super transparent and I've got markers for all my stuff and I'm very clear sure. about what's, what everybody gets. So, um, yeah. but yeah, it is kind you- of like a, Oh, no, it's no, a rules ahead, bloat, ahead. you know, and then mm-hmm. when you see this on the table, it's a, it's a, it's a wound bloat. bloat. Yeah. yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. like, <clears throat> so it, you yeah, were literally was... though, you were the, you were the hipster. You yeah. got to be the Warhammer hipster that showed up to the table. You yeah. set all the Orcon pork down. You filled yeah. your entire deployment zone. And yeah. then somebody said, what are these? I've never seen these before. And you said, you said, ah, you know, it's, it's just this cool stuff. You've probably never heard of it, you know, yeah. like, here we go. Actually, you know? what what I said to people was this. They said, <laughs> wow, I've never played against Bone Splitters before. And I said, yeah, me either, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, every time. Uh, okay. but yeah, so what was it, the list, Mason? What were you okay, playing? So yeah, what are we I was playing a two drop, right? I wanted to go okay. um, competitive approach still, right? Yeah. I'm we're, I'm trying to do the best that I can with them. So two drop, two Wurgog Prophet. Um, they're 160 mm. point, two cast wizards. Mm-hmm. Uh, so r- real powerful. And then they have the stare. Uh, it's they nothing like it was before. Okay. Uh, it's now a shooting attack, D6 shots, oh, fours, wow. twos, rend one, D3 damage. You know, yeah, so quite still mediocre. Pretty good. Yeah, D3 yeah. is good. You can, it can add up. Right. Yeah. Um, once per game, you can um, with with the wizard guys, you can make them twelve shots. So you boom, can boom. juice it, make it twelve. But every one is you take D three mortals to pain, uh, just like the the rule of old kind of. You know. Okay. So yeah, it's kind of like a uh, what are the skaven cannons like on crack yeah, the right? one like yeah, yeah exactly yeah. Um, love to you, see it you do take a four up ward artifact because it's like one of the best ones so you have that going for you but you are still a small wizard so you got some minor shooting but it's nothing like it was before but two of those guys because it's a total of four casts right so okay. um then you i was playing uh 50 boars uh and so those come in units <laughs> of 50. five yes 50. they come in units of five did you reinforce was playing- them Yep, yep. I was playing four okay. units of ten in in one mm-hmm. regiment with the general. So okay. just ma- max pork in that general's regiment. Just king. all the bacon. Yeah, this, yeah. these so, porks chop. Are you these the maniacs? Yeah. Yeah. My my opponent would say, uh, "Which one of those do I get the plus one plus one into?" And I would say, "All of them." You know, <laughs> <laughs> whatever you want. You know. Uh-huh. <laughs> right, wait, Mason. Are these are these the Savage Boar Boy maniacs or the no, regular Savage? Boar I did boys? the regular, all regular okay. Boar Boys. Okay. Yeah, cool. we had cool. no maniacs or manics in our in our list. So Man- mm. maniacs. Yeah, if you will. Man- um, Man- I don't know. Yeah, so uh, 50 <laughs> pigs, right? I had 40, uh, four by 10 in that general's regiment. And then mm-hmm. in the off regiment, I had uh, two units of five for like flank okay. and objective play and, you know, just annoying stuff. And then sure. I had a unit of 20 savage orcs as so Ooh. a reinforced unit of savage orcs um, to round things out. I was nice. playing with the morbid manifestation. I decided to go with that one. It's, you got it. Powerful. You got to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll pause and say that like, this is the second tournament I've used it. Now I used it with night haunt and I used it with these guys. Um, and at the U S open, when I played with night haunt shackles was like my MVP. I think oh, I remember yeah. talking about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. This Shackle weekend, so it was Maelstrom, man. It was so powerful. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I would just set it up where I was at. And if you wanted to come at me, I was going to then be able to immediately move it on my turn, fully juice wherever I want. Or I'm just going to cast it here. I'm going to build it up and I'm still going to do the same thing. Because now with the ability mm. to uh, hold that... Uh, hold that charge until i'm ready to kill it i just keep it safe i juice it up myself and then when it's ready i move it i charge it in and then i explode it so yeah it's like the first thing you cast in the game and then like cool nobody's if somebody's gonna waste their cat like their dispel on that break around wonderful right awesome yeah so yeah it's uh i was just talking with uh james uh nitro one of our patrons we had a game Mm -hmm. where he was he found out how good shackles were by accident by stopping my daughters from doing anything at all (laughs) uh and i was real sad about that but then he he was like oh well i don't know about maelstrom and i was like no 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 cast that right away and then just right let it go 
right? Yeah. So yeah. I, I also love the shackles, but I had such a shackles doing nothing story, which you reminded me of <laughs> with, with that. Yeah. So uh, yeah, you you know, I noticed that quite a few times that shackles really get set up for something, and then it's actually a huge liability later. So you should always be kind of thinking about when you have an opportunity to get to pull that back off the board because you mm. want to be able to recast it, right? In this situation, oh, yeah. I'm playing two two cast wizards. And uh, the all the orc uh, factions have a wall, you know, the big wall, yeah. the, mm -hmm. the iron jaws wall, right? So the bone split is wall is once per game. I, the six up board goes to a five up board army wide. So okay. it's for, for my turn only, and I have to do it on my turn only. And mm -hmm. then my wizards get plus one wizarding. So for one turn, oh. I have yeah, they're two to three cast wizards, right? So that's there's been times where I've wanted or that I've done shackles dispel shackles dispel shackles right to just spread <laughs> damage so mean. at range Jeez. with the bone splitters right like i wanted i wanted all the mortal output from casting that i could so i was like getting mm -hmm. max volume i didn't use uh the grave tide nearly as much this time around um it could have been mm -hmm. just because of what i played or whatever but yeah, um, that it was cool that that another piece of it was was just as powerful you know and it's, yeah it's I still so insane because it's yeah. like it's four different four different manifestations each with right. four different use cases. Mm -hmm. It's still yeah. just yeah. so. And insane. I'll pause and say that yeah. Grave Tide is still probably better than the Maelstrom, oh. but it was just really cool that the Maelstrom was like the MVP this time. See, yeah. see the yeah. Grave Tide seems great, but I've been playing with the malevolent the other three. I sort of have that. Uh huh. So still yeah. been getting plenty of mileage out of them, but absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The Grave Tide, Tide on the just, charge yeah. is just nasty. Yeah, it's really gross. Yeah. 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 Um. And the ability is really good. So if you like good get it, you know, if they move into you and fail a charge mm -hmm. or something, you're like, okay, bump, tag you, and then go in and probably hit you for eight to ten damage. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's really, really good. They're all, they're all good. You know, yeah. manifestations are great. It's it, it's true. Oh, but I, I do got to share though the shackles. What shackles moment? Whereas where I a hod a giant unit vestigars for knew quite what they could do, <laughs> uh -huh. and then they auto ran right by it, and then did like the turn my dice into a four in the charge and like it was like oh this didn't reduce my movement what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> those were some nice chains hmm yeah interesting i will say if them. you want to really if you if you are going to be using the chains be really careful about where you're putting them because they are actually a pretty big liability because they're charge anchors so yeah, yeah, here's yeah, an example if, if i've got a 20 man unit and you put the chains right next to me right and i roll and i need a nine inch charge to get to you and i only roll a seven i can move that whole unit up seven inches and as long mm -hmm. as one of the guys stays near the chains i've yeah. moved seven inches and now you're in combat range of me right i probably have a yeah. fair bit of that unit depending on how i needed to do this so now i still get into you and i didn't even have to charge actually you yeah. know and now you can't counter charge. like there's there's really gross stuff that you can do if you're if you leave the chains in an inopportune spot so that that makes I perfect sense yeah one yeah. of the <laughs> one of the ways they work really well is when you have those two pieces of terrain in the center of the table you can mm -hmm. actually like make a nice mask where it's hard to get just within charge range without getting stuck on them yeah. If somebody's on the yeah. edge from taking the center, that was yeah. something I've yeah. noticed come up a couple of times. Some yeah. tricks that I was doing um, when I could was if I knew that I was going to take first, I would like put a, obviously I have so much stuff. So shit's going on the line, you know, yeah. and mm -hmm. then I'm going to yeah. move it forward and I'm going to walk up. Like if, if there's places of power, I'm going to walk up and be, you know, 2.99 inches away from it as far forward as I can be. So I'm trying to like just command the presence. And then really what I'd like to do is just put the shackles in a straight line right up against their line. Or if I can mm -hmm. like right up against it and starting to go backwards, yeah. because then if they're going to anchor, they're not going to be that far from, from where they're currently sitting. And I'm mm -hmm. okay with that. Cause oftentimes I would just move up and have like one pig and one savage orc touch an objective and everything else just kind of chill. Because yeah. I want my opponent to charge into me. I want them to be like, mm -hmm. here we go. Right. I'm gonna take yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go fight. Cause then I get in there and then we power through, and then all of a sudden I've completely broken out and they're like, Wow, there's pigs everywhere. That, that makes we, sense. Because that's we, the stick with the, the board boys, right? They can just kind of yep. like enthusiastically run around. Correct. Yeah, we yeah. probably want to explain why you want them to get very close to you so you can do yeah. Um, so uh 
a couple of things. The sub faction says I'm anti charge rend, right? So mm-hmm. I get an additional rend when I'm charged. Then mm-hmm. the allegiance ability lets you uh, take debate and um, mm-hmm. put it on three different units. And they say when you're charged, you get plus one attacks characteristic, but you Do lose I... this buff when you finally charge someone. So um... when when your opponent is is charging at those ten man boar units. They, you know, are going to get plus one attack characteristic if they've been given take debate. And, you know, it's yeah. like, you know, three units of 10 are going to get this buff and be my my front line. So they're going to mm-hmm. get charged, you know. I have, I have um, a question. Yeah. Does that apply to big stab as two? Like any any unit or is it just yeah. four specific? Um, no, I think that one is, I think that one's anybody for take the bait. Yeah. Because I, I sometimes would give it to the savage orcs. It just depends, okay. you know, okay. yeah, cool. if my opponent has higher armor saves or if they have like really low armor saves or something mm-hmm. or like against night haunt, then I'm like, I just want the volume, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I, I ha- there's more of them, but I didn't build any big sticks. Cause I, I thought they were pointless. So may, I, I, the points at the but end, they're entirely they're pointed. Of they're entirely sticks. pointed. Yeah, um, if those guys were like 100 point. points for two, I would have played a bunch. I mean, I definitely oh, sure. talked with Matt about it. You know, I, mm-hmm. we, we, I mm-hmm. explored an angle of trying to get some, but uh, it just it, it's like, I ain't got none. Just they're too expensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's okay. Um, and also, which tournament was this at? Oh, I went to High Desert Hammerfall in Bend, okay. Oregon. Okay. Nice. Yep. yep. Was this so a was GT pretty, or it like was? RTD? Yep. Okay. It was That's a. Cool. It was a golden ticket GT. It's pretty cool. There was forty four people, something like that. Nice. But the cool thing is, a lot of the top players were golden ticket holders. Oh. So it was kind of a, a juicy ride where people were like, "Okay, cool. I'm trying to compete for the top slot, but even if I lose, I've really got to stay in this because it's gonna go to, you know, high likelihood." statistically right it's going to go to mm-hmm. one of these like third fourth fifth place contenders yeah. Yeah. because that, a lot of your regular really... winners yeah it was kind of neat um so Ooh. i you know yeah. for lack of a better term had nothing to lose but some drive time to go to this tournament and i was and i wanted yeah. to play bone split as so we committed um mm-hmm. man and it was just tons of fun it's 200 Good. wounds on the table i like Ooh. at one point was unpacking my army and putting it on the table and my opponent's like man you got a lot of models out here and i'm like i know I, it's, it's really it's a lot like i'm t- setting them up i'm trying to explain all the different color code which was pretty good you know everybody was it was all clean all all the time and then yeah. i went and moved the box that i had the models in and there was 20 more and the dude's like <laughs> jaw basically dropped <laughs> <if> i had <laughs> 20 more <laughs> <laughs> Shit. that is that is the boon of playing that army yeah i'm, I'm glad oh, to you know see what? the color code worked out for you too oh yeah, yeah that was the totally only way clean. i could keep them straight was how, like how, color no, coding was super clean. how did your color code it was like on the base like a stripe or like the whole base no one or, unit uh, of 10 was like brown boars with red banners and then brown right. boars with blue banners and then that's white right. or white boars with black and then yep. brown boars with black and then there was yep. two by five that were white boars with red and blue yeah, had memories. Okay, okay. Yeah, so that makes sense method. to y'all. I, yeah. Well, so it it's funny because some people don't like look at that stuff, and that's how I that's how I make sure. Like when I paint all my armies, they always have yep. those minute details where yeah. it's like if you're looking for color coding, that's that's yeah, what I'm no, gonna it, do. So I, I, was, I was so glad you got that because I yes. totally didn't even point it out. So yeah, that's no, so I, it, was, it was it actually worked out perfectly because another right. method that I've used if you need to differentiate stuff if you're oh, you know, spamming. The rubber uh-huh. bands, right? Mm-hmm. The little, the little girl headband, uh, or you know, plastic rubber bands that are different yeah. colors. Scrunchies, yep, yep, yep. No, no, the them. tiny, tiny little plastic rubber ones. Oh, the, yeah, 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 yeah. you're talking about, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. You can like put it over their little, um, their weapon or their helmet or on their mm-hmm. shield, and there's black and there's white and blue and red, right? So you can just mark them, and when you're mm-hmm. done, you can just mm-hmm. snip them off or pull them off. You don't have to actually yeah. like mark your model. You can just dress them with the color. Yeah. yeah. So little, I've done that too, but uh, you know. Just for, uh, I, I put them, Matt has the models back actually, but um, it's basically a naked green person mm-hmm. riding a mm-hmm. sa- a, a, a wild boar with no saddle yeah. or anything. And then like a few bands that are painted like red, red, and then sometimes a tattoo. And then sometimes one of them's holding a really intricate banner that's far more intricate than anything else they have going on. This is just advancing my Todd Orc on a Todd Boar theory. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So yep. essentially that, yeah. Uh-huh. It really stands out because they're like high impact colors too. So yeah. Um, yeah. 
So okay. it just tons of wounds, tons of models, uh, tons of fun, really. All right. Cool. I ended up going three, two. Um, okay. so I was really shooting for a four one and I was three Oh going into day two. So I was really feeling juicy about mm. it, but there was two lists that I did not want to play going into the tournament. And so I was like, mm -hmm. okay, I just got to skirt, skirt and skate by these and I'll be groovy. And then I played those in round four and five. So, oh, okay. uh, yeah, I, I okay. knew what my hard counters were, like I kind of mentioned, uh, and I knew what I was yeah. really good into, which I, if you were a newer player, unfortunately, I was really good into you. And if you were not a couple, it just, it was just because it's so unknown, just that unknown element, I'm going to, throw you off your game so much that mm -hmm. it, it's yeah. just it's, it's tough um but against the the things that were counters to me i was like oh i have no chance like i just need to dodge these guys um so i was really stoked i got a few practice games in i was mm -hmm. i was just ready to go um round one i got to play against nurgle this guy had like a beautiful grinch christmas themed Ooh. nurgle oh that's cool that was nice. like a sleigh like it was the crazy. Mm. It was so crazy. I have some pictures. I'll try to put them in the Discord or something. But okay. yeah, yeah, uh, please do. I, it's the only thing I took pictures of. So <laughs> of the whole right. of the whole event. Um, really cool. cool. Um, unfortunately, they're not in a great spot, and he's got like seventeen models in total, and I've yeah. got a lot of mm -hmm. models. Um, I'm really good into monsters. Um, for to, to without going too much into detail, that one of my other allegiance abilities is once per combat in any combat, I can give any of my bone splitters unit just one of them, but any one I want plus one to wound and plus one to save, which is basically your finest hour, right? Yeah. So at the start mm -hmm. of combat, in every combat, if I'm in combat with a monster, just boom, finest hour, and I can keep repeating it though it's every time. Oh, boom, boom. Yeah, yeah, it's not like once per game or anything. It's just we're in combat i'm gonna, okay boom you get plus one you get finest hour okay Just, okay bone yeah. split is gonna split bones yeah so yeah. really good into Probably monsters do. great into other stuff right the those mm -hmm. boars i mentioned right they're three attacks base on fours and threes rend one one damage mm -hmm. when you charge me they get the plus one rend so we're talking rend two right um i've got a spell that can give them plus one rend that's my unlimited spell so i can give it to up to two units okay and my purple sun i can make them rend four I'm awake now. All right. Yeah, right. They have three attacks Damn. base. You charge me, that goes up to four attacks base, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. So that's the rider, not including that's the, the pig. That's the rider. The pigs are two each. Yeah. And those are plus mm -hmm. one damage on the charge. Kind of controversial. They came out as not companions. So they were busted. I was really excited about that. <laughs> then they had their little <laughs> FAQ balance day and they like yeah. snuck it in there. It's not even in the app. I could have cheated every opponent and nobody would have known, but I was honorable mm. and I played them as companions. Because... As one does, but still a bummer after like... That's yeah, it's a over. huge damage nerf though, because <laughs> oh, the army yeah. also just gets plus one to wound on the charge. All It's another allegiance ability we have. So, um, okay. yeah. So, it so the, compa the companion mounts are plus one damage on the charge also. So, mm. the... The, the unit of 10 that gets the plus one plus one would have been on like fours and twos for the potentially extra rend, extra okay. attacks when charged, right? Like yeah. it's just a huge DPS decrease. But to be mm -hmm. fair, they probably would have been secretly busted and like eight people would have played it and I would have been one of them because <laughs> I'm a crazy person. Um, mm -hmm. But anyways, so I played Nurgle and... Yeah, I basically I took first turn and took the entire board away from him like he couldn't yep. even touch an objective without going through mountains of pork and, okay. and so, All I the kept bacon. To, so he, he was kept to zero points he rolled and got the double turn and decided to take it and oh, only no. scored one point so it came back to me that not much else happened or it, it was just a scrum in front of objectives and I just kept refilling it you know yeah. I went up 19 to one I got the double turn. I took it and tabled, you know. Oh, no. So you just positionally blocked him out from getting any points. Yeah. Correct. And yeah. that's Good. that's kind of like the entire way that the army plays, right? It's like just put so many wounds in front of everything yep. that it's like, hey, there's this clear wall. Yep. Um, and I've got more pork behind this pork wall. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, they're going to go do all the things that need to happen while you're yep. just getting slammed with. Bacon. yeah there's another guy locally the guy who i played that second game it was the first time i had met him thomas mm -hmm. i think his name is and he plays them down here and he that he played and i was like mm, 
you did that wrong, but that was so fucking cool. So, um, okay, so, okay. uh, he definitely gets credit, but okay. one thing he told nice. me, but he liked the 20 Savage Orcs. Cause he's like, Hey, I eat these guys off to a side objective because so many people use a five or a 10 man to go over and flank something and then overpower mm -hmm. a side objective and just own it. But yeah. that ain't do that ain't doing it against 20 Savage Orcs. That's 40 yeah. wounds. Okay. Yeah. And, when, and when you charge me, that's like 60 attacks and yeah, it's fours and threes and no rend, but you know what you will roll ones and twos Eventually, so, <laughs> yeah. yeah it's a it's a pure volume of dice play like night oh yeah just and hate your army <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah unfortunately night hunt is a hard counter i, I do that was one is of my it? losses yeah okay interesting interesting because i thought the volume of attacks might make a, a, a bit of a difference but maybe i was uh, it's the speed and debuffs i think but i uh, think yeah. he'll, he'll let us know i'm sure yeah we'll uh, I, I, i'm yeah. curious now <laughs> ask a question one, one more question too yeah what what was your ritual for oh, this first yep. game the guy his, his ritual end, yeah. wait is it ritual. the same ritual or is it, yeah, ritual? Is, is it the because it's not the ghost energy right now you're not playing ghosts or, or is it is it like a green ghost? Oh, you know what? No, we did. We were able. We stopped at Fred Meyer because we were down in Bend. So we okay. uh, sleep the night before. Not great, mm -hmm. but it was fun. It was a six hour drive after a long work day. So it was a long okay. way in. Mm -hmm. we, we, we did stop. Okay. We hit up Fred Meyer. I got a ghost energy drink. Boom. Good. Okay. Good to go. Feeling good. What's up? What did you say? I, I said it was great. Yeah. But that that sounds wonderful. I was wondering if it was yeah. like a green oh, yeah. ghost or a, maybe a you know, uh, no uh, watermelon. I like the pink watermelon one. Nice. Oh, okay. totally fair. Yeah. Totally fair. <laughs> Yeah. Cool. Um, and the, yeah. Uh, so ritual uh, was pretty good. Um, it was at an elks elks club elks lodge. I forget oh, how yeah, you yeah, call yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, an that's elks a very chill venue. situation. Yeah. Oh my goodness, it was super chill. There was like a one guy there doing the whole yeah. bar kitchen thing and feeding anyone and everyone that wanted food. But it, you know, it was like up to twenty or twenty five of for them were probably getting food. He did it all by himself. He was stellar. His name was John. He was a rock star. And, and the food and the food and drink was like you know for lack of a, a you know in the nicest way it was dirt cheap you know yeah. like six dollar uh, chicken strips and fries you know it was like a ten dollar oh, yeah. chicken yeah, yeah, awesome. kind of... soda yeah and it was good it was real good you is know? this yeah. 2024 in america how did you find that price i know what <laughs> yeah. is that like yeah i want to be a member on the corner now, of my kinda, street you know? in baltimore yeah. prices what is this <laughs> yeah it was it was crazy yeah and be beers were like four or five bucks i don't drink but that you know that's <laughs> rumor on the street was that uh it was for, good. for those of us yeah. in the know with the, with the beers yes that is a good place <laughs> right, right. Exactly. yeah <laughs> yeah ritual yeah. both days was pretty good second day i actually yeah. did double up on the celsius i like the raspberry mm -hmm. acai okay. uncarbonated yeah. celsius uncarbonated. Okay. yeah okay yeah. uh and, which is slightly different but i like to change it up so um, that is, that's nice okay yeah. so, so game two we're feeling good yeah wait, game wait, two wait, we're wait. feeling good yep totally random tangent but it is always strikes late so like a thousand of these are permitted you're big in energy drinks mason have you tried these alani's these are great they are but okay so my opinion on the alani's is that mm -hmm. the the flavor wow. if you will it has has a different taste to it you know it the flavor is always present but it has like I, I can't think of something better to say than like a twist or a, a tang or a twinge on it. It, do, it does have a weird tang. And, and, yeah. and it's very powerful, right? It is, it is um, powerful flavor wise. What's the okay. word I'm looking for? Rich, it's too much it, nitro. It's too much it's, nitro. It's, in it? it's like rich in flavor almost mm -hmm. for, is, is a good way to, to describe it. Cause it is, it's, it's like almost overpowering. Some of the flavors are just like, Whoa. It, it's so much stronger than I thought it would be. I thought I was buying yeah. seltzers and got these by accident. And uh -huh. this thing is like the great flavor of my childhood, but like okay. yeah. in neutron okay. star formation. Yeah, uh, gotcha. But, but almost yeah. like it was a Flintstones vitamin at the same time. Yeah, they just like uh, someone just put them all in this can and shook it up with some fizzy yeah. water. The yeah. thing that are about those are similar to the Celsius. They are like kind of sold in health food and vitamin and, mm -hmm. and nutrition type approach because they are done with a healthier thought in mind i never try to okay. tell anyone they're good for you or anything mm -hmm. like that but they do try to put better vitamins and and less of the shitty stuff that other energy drinks have so okay. the alani knew both and the celsius are good and known for that but yeah the alani news are like really strong okay yeah so i propose a new, pretty good a new Jack's episode all nighter 
Definitely. I'm not sleeping anymore because I had that along with this beer. <laughs> a new episode, oh, a, a, a new rec- a new episode of Always Strikes Last what that we'll have to do is just an energy drink ranking. Like, okay. Only I, I don't drink talk. energy drinks, so I'll just sit there with coffee the whole time. I do. Okay. There you go. Okay. So you, you okay. yeah. we'll we'll have to we'll have to get a whole smorgasbord of <laughs> okay. energy drinks and then be right. well, this one yeah. is. <laughs> yeah. I would. Well, that one. But is. yeah. Um, I, I try some every now and again, but I really don't like to deviate from what's good. You know, most mornings it's like, cool, this is where we at. Nor should you, because you have a proven track record with a ghost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, that's maybe that's what it was. I should, I shouldn't have switched up to the Celsius. That's what, that's what did it in. <laughs> that was day, that uh, was day two to the Celsius. Yeah, yeah, uh, that, that was it. That was it. I'm suing. I'm suing. Um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, Game two, I was playing up against a OBR list, which ba- you could barely call it that because it was Nagash OBR. So, oh. um, yeah, what he was trying to do was very clever. You know, he was mm-hmm. like, I'm Nagash. I've got the three little bodyguard guys. I've got a couple units of the horsies to go do the things that your five piggies you're trying to do. And mm-hmm. then I've got the four uh, more gas archive that I'm trying to yeet forward full buff anywhere. Cause they're like special boy tethered and they get all uh-huh. the buffs and then he wants yeah. to go in and just devastate and then they die. And then the gash brings, brings them back. back. Right. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. So, uh, I you, yeah. do not fall for death tricks. Okay. So mm. I, I let him come in and you know what he <laughs> said, here's my no ward or the minus one ward. And the yeah, spell the that bird. they have. So he Give turned the off bird. the war. Yeah. Then he sent him in. He dealt 30 damage. He killed a whole unit of 10 pigs. I said, that's impressive. Nobody's done that. Right. Yeah. Then I said, but I'm very sorry that I have to leave these Morgas Archai and go kill the rest of your army now. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, Look. so I. I just knew that I could, I didn't need to kill a full unit, you know, like I, I killed yeah. one maybe. And then I went and I, and with the shooting, I got it down to like to two with one health left. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm fucking out of here. <laughs> yeah. I, I wasn't at scared that point, of that anymore. At that point, they're manageable. What are they going to even do? Right. Ready? And he's more spread out now. And I was like, man, I can fit 30 horses right near Nagash right this minute. Mm-hmm. I mean, piggies, <clears throat> they turn into horses. I'm, I'm a, a flesh eater court's main. So I have the delusion. Oh, no. Like, yeah, yeah there really you go. so there sometimes you go. They, they become knights you know but exactly. so exactly. we so i i just like went around him and went into nagash and just dropped him and then i knew i if i could kill everything else right because he yeah. was in the gash one drop so there was not yeah. much going on and yeah i just left the archai alone no <laughs> unit died before nagash did and, and so i was able to kill him uh, again, I do. I get the good buff against the monster, even if I engage. And so I gave him the glow and green frenzy. So plus mm-hmm, one mm-hmm. Uh, rend, and I sent in two units of them. I gave up the the buff, right? But in this instance, it was like this is just so much weight volume. Like I'm confident I'm gonna take you out. So I, I yeah. love the some some bacon lifted nagash that. Oh yeah, that completes <clears throat> no questions my life. asked. Yeah, no questions <laughs> asked. Um. So that was a pretty easy game, um, all, all things considered, because I I know how to play around a model like that. And so if you are not brilliantly, ex- you know, like I, I think that Nagash is great if piloted perfectly, you know, mm-hmm. no, no, no blunders allowed. Yeah. But um, and, and there's nothing wrong there. with that. It's just, yeah, it's uh, it's tough. So mm-hmm. um, round three, I got to play against Jack Ballard. <laughs> Hey. Yeah, we rode down together, so we're about to we're about to play, and I'm like, all right, losers walking home. Mm. Um, <laughs> and, and Jack was playing shoot cast, and I have played a few games against Stormcast, and uh, they like we we rack up, and I'm like, all right, here you can go, and then they like do stuff, and then I was like, oh cool, uh, oh did you already is your turn done? Okay, sweet. Uh, like oh, I, non-existent, <laughs> you know, oh, you, you did mm. stuff. All right, cool. Did you pull that? I have stuff. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Here's everything. Right. And then it's really yeah. kind of a similar game to the, uh, how I played night haunt against Jack Geiger at uh, another Jack, another Stormcast mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. at yep. Tacoma mm-hmm. open where I went first or, or I, I gave away first in this instance, actually, yep. he brought down some stuff kind of came into me with a unit that just, he just let die. I was like, I don't like, why did you charge that? You know, it just died. Mm-hmm. Um, can't come into the pigs with a something tiny. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And so then he had some shooter stuff out there. So I like 
I had already screened off the whole backfield so he couldn't deep strike anywhere behind me Mm because I have all this space, all this girth. So then I move out, I go and kill all that stuff. And I, and I still have all my backfield screened off, but I've only gotten like one endless spell out. I had a pretty poor magic phase, but now I've got, I've just expanded forward where my positioning Mm. is. Then I got the double turn and moved and set up my endless spell. So Jack could not come onto the board. With the rest of his models, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's. Oh yeah, no! So we were, you we did him dirty. You, you yeah. covered it that well. I guess you had so yeah. many bodies. He kicked yeah. you out of his car after that one. That's no, he rough. took my car, so I knew it. Oh, was okay. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> You're like, wait, am I driving? Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> I t- I told him later, you know, and and uh, Jack was feeling really good because this was like his second tournament, um, mm-hmm. back mm-hmm. in in quite a long time. So he's still definitely just getting his his bearings yeah. and kind of relearning everything. But I was I joked with him later. I was like, yeah, don't worry. Come here. I'll take your hand. Look, this is a tour around the sun. Okay, but now you have to go now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you've come too close. Time to go. Yeah, it's beautiful touched. sun. <laughs> yeah, those wings are melting. Yeah. Oh man. Ugh. So uh, that was pretty good, but I okay. will say um, I had really good pairings, right? I was like, boom, this is exactly what I want. Yeah. I'm you looking at the lead armies, right? Yeah, I, I'm looking at the mission, the guys for tomorrow, and there's a gloom spike gets trogs. There's a slaves to darkness yeah. with a bunch of chaos warriors. There's Beasley yeah. and Sneech with some skyfires and Kairos. Damn it, Beasley. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then yeah. Stark with Stormcast. Um, yeah. So I want to play any of those except Slaves to Darkness. Slaves to Darkness is a great army against me because they are just as tanky. So, yeah. in a, uh, but in their own right, it's an equal mm-hmm. compensation, right? They have great volume. They just have great buffs. They have stacking things. You know, it's yeah. easy for my units to die, yeah. and so the buffs that they get are going to carry a lot of weight. Uh, and this guy's list was like a clog list, like me, but so girthy. So I I don't want to fight Varengard really either because they can on a double turn just get through enough of me where i'm no longer um pushing mm. you know yeah they so i didn't want to fight that i didn't want to fight that goal it's a debuff on top yeah. of that it's, it's, it's and it's the, the night hunt the night hunt player uh, alex gonzalez had lost to beasley in round one so i knew i wasn't gonna face that so i'm like sweet just need to dodge yeah. slaves i'll be groovy boom show up day four going into slaves so uh, <laughs> uh yeah. Oh. On a tough mission because it's limited resources, also. So oh, it's a rough one. Oh, okay. Yeah, it yeah, is yeah. a tough one. Yep. So um hmm. here's the thing. I know that I know I have an uphill battle, but I also know what to do. Uh I just gotta do it right. And so um I give away, I get the choice, I give away first turn in a kind of uncharacteristic fashion. Whether or not that's a, a blunder, uh hard to argue. I it it felt right and everything that proceeded made it feel right right so i gave away first turn he moved up took some points sent the knights into me did some damage did a healthy amount of damage i killed like the three or four of those knights too though Mm -hmm. um then i was able to power through with like seven boars that got the counter charged actually from the side and then got okay. four so they they actually power like through coming in inches, clutch right and basically got three inches away from both of his wizards in his back line which right? is exactly wow. what you on want on his turn exactly so he fell for the classic blunder right um yeah yeah. and because he had these guys on the flanks and then he, he had this pocket in the middle that the knights were going to pin but i break out of that right well so, i mean it, it was because you were so greasy yeah all the bacon mm. yeah he exactly. didn't realize he was going to be dealing with that greasy bacon so yeah, I capitalized on that really well, went in, killed that, did some good okay. damage. Um, I then needed, I wanted the double turn. If I would have got it there, game over, right? Yeah. Didn't get it. Um, he was able to go and, um, you know, have some success. He took a, he took, take the flanks. He had both of the units of warriors go and kill both of my pig units onto the sides. Okay. There was some more scrumming in the middle a little bit. Um, but I was losing resources, you know, because of how were they limited? Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I well, see mine were b- bountiful and then were slowly <laughs> becoming limited. Oh, know? shit. <laughs> um, uh, and, and so we play forward a little bit, and I make a pretty big positioning error where I move models over near these other chaos warriors because I'm trying to engage the the like left hand side objectives because I've yeah. basically used my time up with the right hand side objectives. 
And I mm-hmm. moved these guys over like three inches away from these chaos warriors on the top of a battle round. And I'm like, oh shit, he's just going to counter charge these. And I'm never taking this point. And that's exactly what happened. We uh, had to do some like measuring kerfuffling because there was this objective was like an inch and a half tall. So we had to like kind of walk over it and measure and move mm, my shit. So I yeah. set it down and then I was like, oh damn and oh i don't want to do that can i put these back and we both agreed that we kind of had to do some shenanigans to get them where they were where we measured we committed our time to doing that so i was like you know what cool yep they're there but definitely a blunder Um, and even though my opponent had made a pretty big one in the beginning of the game just like taking the double turn i've talked about this at the first into two you have time to recover he had time to recover my yeah. blunder was in th- in the third turn and i did not have the time to recover yeah so yeah we got to a situation where i could not get my models from the right hand side of the board over to the left hand side of the board in enough time to to get ahead on the points mm-hmm. and and so i lost that game i think by by six points when, when oh it does. okay it so a really yeah. close game very yeah, close so, yeah, yeah. We both That's were right. like right there, you know. Yeah, so it, it was right at the wire. Mm-hmm. Um, tough mission, really strong player. He went on to win the tournament. Spoiler alert. Um, so cool, great, great guy, SoCal guy. Um, came up, you know, okay. killing it. He, he was, uh, if you've looked at list before, his name's Ben. Um, he played all the Splintered Fang. He was pretty religiously playing. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I've heard of yeah, Ben. Same dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cool, the cool. one and only. He was a gentleman. Uh, really awesome game. Uh, then I'll speed run round five because I played against Night Haunt and Alex mm-hmm. Gonzalez. I-, I love him. He's an awesome guy. I had to play against him and twice. He's good on his at, Night Haunt. Very, yeah. very strong player. He's been right? a loyalist I didn't want to play Night Haunt because who does? I, I was just, just, just miserable to play against. The yeah. reason why it's such a good counter is because if I give away the turn, I actually can't move him off because he could just sprint at me so that mm-hmm. i can't get onto yeah. the points and this was one where you need to go take the home objective so i had to take the first no. and tiptoe no. on and get the points so then he goes okay oh. boom move oh. uh run everybody okay make 10 and 11 inch charges and get everything into you decimate what's happening here get a yep. double turn decimate what's behind that oh, you know so double two. Okay. they just okay. they just sweep boom boom mm-hmm. um and and I, you can't have that happen uh <laughs> yeah yeah the mystery is resolved now when you yeah it that way. <laughs> yeah because yeah. also yeah. my whole army sub faction is plus one rend when you charge me it really works against those yeah. guys yeah 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 yeah, yeah that, that makes I, sense. I had the whole juiced up uh um plus one plus one unit go into some heck thrace and i think i killed two of them oh no <laughs> sounds about right yeah that yeah. so you you're playing um uh where where how i how it felt to play them <laughs> in third <laughs> yeah when you're going up against night hunt yeah uh, that's, that's pretty much to. what it was I, ha- I had to you know i didn't mm. want to play him uh, the slaves i kind of knew what to do the night hunt you know legitimately i i you know i i, I played them so i'm part of the problem but i did it first mm-hmm. so y'all copying me <laughs> um but uh i love it, it. is it is demoralizing to play against because there's mm-hmm. nothing that you can do that can stop what their strategy is yeah you know what i mean mm. and i play a lot of card games as well and so there are sometimes card games can can create like infinite combos or deterministic game states meaning mm-hmm. like no matter what i know that i cannot win now right mm-hmm. and sometimes when we get to rolling for priority and in, in round five and i am gonna double you you're like okay cool shake hands you're gonna kill my last unit we got this but like in round two when i can look at the board and say oh my goodness i absolutely cannot win this game anymore and you haven't even made your attacks yet i told matt this earlier before he made any of his first round attacks i said let's roll a prio right now and if you win this we can call it right yeah. and i don't surrender in this game unless i know i cannot win and to yeah. see that deterministic game state is like that's a flaw with them right now because it is demoralizing now i knew that i was not there to you know split hairs over you know it, this was fine this was the yeah. end of the day yeah. you know um, and i had already kind of lost the journey so momentum blah it was just funny because i was like two lists i don't want to pay two people two strong players two great lists two armies that are good against me and i'm like but right i flew mm-hmm. too close to the sun apparently on the, the yeah. pigs i i was covered in grease and caught uh. fire right after i dropped jack off at home so um <laughs> 
So Love still, you, Jack. Oh, yeah, man. exactly. But so on, on that note, though. Great. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, yeah. go ahead. So, like, on that note, though. Um, so we know that you're you're going through the armies and you're you're kind of doing your last hurrahs for bone splitters and i know i kind of pushed you and just like you know beasts of chaos are going to be more comfortable but bone splitters is going to be completely challenging right yeah, uh-huh. it's going to be new how did that work out for you because normally like i know you love like the random tech uh doing things that are unconventional as far as your play and then yeah. uh picking like the hot sauce of the army somehow making somehow making a mild sauce into an, into a very hot sauce right so yeah like, what was your good. what was your idea when you were approaching this and like how because i know we had talked earlier about you know you were last minute wanting to go to zinch because you thought it would be er- a little bit easier right yeah more competitive yeah well easier to win i guess yeah. is the way to, the yes. way that i was going yes. to say but like, yeah, so sticking to your guns with that or sticking to the list with that army, like how how did that how did that change your experience with it as opposed to going in with Zinch? Yeah, um, I'm definitely glad that I stuck with it because that unexpected element, that unknown, you know, I'm not normally trying to be a hipster, but it was funny to to have people have like no idea what was going on. Right. Sure. Now, mm-hmm. Similar to a method actor of sort, I like immerse myself in whatever it is that I'm doing. So I like, yeah. you know, if somebody wanted me to give them advice on bone splitters at writ large right now, not that it's a huge faction by and large, but I think that I could actually com- give them competitive advice on, on how to do it in that two or three week window or whatever math that, you know, that I, I feel very confident in that, that I've, I've, I've mastered, you know, so to speak, what the knowledge that I could have on the table, of course not, there's stuff to learn. Cause you were possessed by the wall. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and I, and I joined the discord servers and I chat with those folks and I take in what they have to say. I have no mm-hmm. idea their skill level or anything, but they've got insight that I don't have. I can yeah. combine that with the general game expertise that I've got really apply. I felt like, I felt like I was in a good spot all weekend. I was really happy. I was in mm-hmm. a good mind state because I didn't take bone split as, as a five Oh army, right? That was not my yeah. objective. Did I, did I think that they were powerful? Yes. Did I, I was, like I said, I was going to be over the moon of the four one. Right. But yeah. uh, the three, two, really. I'm super happy with, right. I'm one of like less than a hundred games of bone splitters, you know, mm-hmm. we're talking yeah. like 1500 plus with Stormcast and, and S2D and stuff now. So, you know, that was cool. Mm-hmm. I, I, I just wanted to do it. I just wanted to do it for me. And it felt like <clears> a good time. I think the initial rationale was I want to, I'm, I want reps just to keep, keep, green right um yeah no, no pun intended um but there was no <laughs> pun balance succeeded between, pun succeeded right? basically. there was no balance between uh tacoma and this you know by and large mm-hmm. other than that little uh, like faq that they did um so I didn't feel like if I was pivoting an army to test for worlds that's coming up in November that I was going to gain as much so it kind of felt like the right time to to mm-hmm. get one of the two armies i was trying to play off of you know just kind of not, you know, not it, get it out of the way but this is the right time to do it it, mm-hmm. it makes perfect sense i mean you have the golden ticket right yeah. it's it's a good moment to you know get some practice you know kind of keep yourself sharp by trying some different things so your mental agility yep. is up there but but also it's a fun run <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like oh, yeah. You don't, yeah yeah and it was tons of fun you know and i had them in that little box that matt that i br- brought it back to massive so people loved that i had like these models i'm just like pulling out of a toy box you know putting on the t- <laughs> i feel bop, like bop, 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 bop. I'm your just arms like, must have gotten strong carrying around that many models all at once <laughs> oh no it's tiny i was taking out like a pizza box dude just boop, yeah. Boop, boop. oh yeah, yeah. wasn't like that oh, oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's one of the war cry war cry box lids and you just yeah they're, they're orcs like so you just kind of yeah. pile them in on each other they're like yeah. the one army that i have that i'm like okay this goes like this yeah <laughs> like everything else i'll be like meticulous and be like no yeah. no no that's the gonna units, break but that army is just like as they die though i put them back in the box in their separate corners that's how i would like okay, try to keep it like somewhat aligned so like yeah. the 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 brown and red i'd put in in one corner and split mm-hmm. them up so as they died so then next game i was at least somewhat closer to having that shit organized at the start of the game it's so I, many that bodies. was the toughest part was getting it organized at the, at the front so i could tell my opponent what was what and then i never lost track so there you um, go nice yeah 
Yeah. But I better jet because my wife is going to be mad at me, but it's, it's okay. This was so much fun. I hope that you Yeah, man. Uh, Mason, like thanks so much for coming uh, on. It I was did, awesome to hear about I it. I always Matt, love having you on. I know. I did tell Matt that, like, you know, let's say there's a GT, like, end mm-hmm. of May or something next year okay. or something like that, right before right before the end. I'll, mm-hmm. I, I, I would gladly play them again. Just, okay. yeah. yeah. Um, I, Matt almost encouraged me to stick with it, but I, mm-hmm. I'm on a different journey now. And I think that it felt good to stay Ooh. on my original journey and yeah. Matt kind of talked me into that. And so I think I want to stay on that track, even though it would be fun to keep playing them. And it, 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 it lost a little bit of the uniqueness because now I've done it and I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. this, my journey yeah. was to do it and go on. So yeah, that's well, now, butter, now it's see right? Gone. Yeah. yeah. Or is it Beast of Chaos or are you doing Z? Beast of Chaos. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're still workshopping. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It should be Beast of Chaos, but we, I, I would allow for intermingling. We'll see. You know, just I, I'm just going to say Beast There's of Chaos is so there. great. Yeah. So great. <laughs> <laughs> or it could just be Oops All Theradon. Who knows? Yeah. True. True. Yeah. That's, we'll make it that's also a choice and a good one. Stay you get to bring the it's, toe. it's in two weeks, so I promise I'll come back and tell everyone what I Yeah, do. man, you got it. You're, okay. you're the one of us getting to go to tournaments. We want to have you out <laughs> and talk about this. Yeah, shit. seriously. Like you those four it. years over here. Oh, you got it. <laughs> then I have two more after that before Jeez. Worlds. So, so you're okay, getting right. some good practice in Mason. And Yep. Yeah. Yep. And oh. and the ones coming up will be more likely to be the air quote worlds meta. So gotcha. um, yeah. Gotcha. That's that's when you that's when it's overdrive. Yeah. That'll be tested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that makes sense. There should be like a points update in like a week or two. The rumor I've been hearing. So we'll yep. we'll see. Right. right. Yep. Right. And whenever uh, they update the app with the Skaven stuff, it will be yep. at that same time because they're lazy. So yeah. Totally or efficient. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. We're yeah. smart, okay. not hard. Right. All right. Mason, go guys. to bed before we get you in trouble. Yeah. Get right. out of here. Yeah. Good for it, sir. Good to see you, man. Yeah. 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 Good to see you. Oh, that oh, that was exciting. Yeah, yeah right? I'm excited. I'm excited the Orc on Pork did so well. You see, that's uh, like, that's what you want out of that yes. crazy, fun, horror, like wild, what is this army? And you know, mm-hmm. he, he almost had even a, a better score with that. But I'm, yeah. I'm just kind of like thinking that that GT must have been so fun because of the aura of possibility where mm-hmm. yeah. so many of like the players there who are probably going to take it have already gotten their golden ticket. So you could legitimately mm-hmm. come in like fifth after a reasonably good round and go four, one or three, two or something and yeah. actually get your golden ticket and go. Yeah. Rounds, which would be fun. <laughs> well, and that's the interesting, interesting thing about it too, right? <clears throat> like he's getting in reps to get in reps because he's getting better at the game regardless of what army he plays, right? Well, he's still yeah. deciding what army he's going to play. Um, and we're, we're constantly like workshopping. And I think that's one of the reasons I enjoy my massive horde that I have mm. of plastic, which is mm. like, yeah. And, you know, it's part of the community, I think, as well in, in Warhammer that I really enjoy, which is talking about lists and going like, do I have that? Do I? Yeah. Okay. So why are you choosing that as I'm pulling them out of the case to be like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, yeah, that may need a touch up. Okay. I can get a little bit of extra painting done you're on like this assembling army. assembling it on the fly as your theory. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. More like, more like I already have these, most of the stuff, the, the only thing that I have, the only army that I have that is not yet painted is this, because I go through spurts, right? I'll build, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. build all of this stuff at once you guys have seen it join the discord if you would like become a patreon yeah. come and oh, see yeah. the like, massive subscribe yep working massive out speed posts. assembler massive painter occasional mm-hmm. converter of disturbing slaneshi <laughs> and nerdly there was a mm-hmm. giant thing with do. yeah I mean, yeah, all I did and, was paint ten acolytes recently. You're out here. You you had necro. You had ten different game systems. Well, my mm-hmm. current finger said yeah. I can't even finish like the giant chaos terrain piece. And meanwhile, like you know, <laughs> Matt Blake's and an army's done. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, an army's table ready, right? But that's yeah. that's sincerely why I enjoy um uh having it so that people who want to play what they want to play like will yeah. always have access to one of the armies, and it provides me the ability to oh. That needs detail work. Mm-hmm. He's got a week before the tournament or before he's going to pick this up. Yeah. That finish, you know? That's um, a good way fun, of being an enabler. Fun way of being good way. Yeah. And it's great to let armies that I have that, like, I'm frankly not at the skill level that somebody else is. Sure. With go out and destroy. Because as good as Orc on Pork look right now, like, 
slaves to darkness lists like that are a dime a dozen right Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. and night haunt are also going to be a dime a dozen right now i don't think there's been a tournament that i've gone to that hasn't had at least one or two night haunt lists that are Mm -hmm. you know destroying and everyone that bought the second edition starter box Mm -hmm. has a bunch of night haunt yep you know, they're, yep. they're, they're, they were as well collected as Stormcast and because of the really cool sculpts for when mm-hmm. they came out, they were so unique and so wispy and had all the negative space. They're very popular among hobbyists. Yeah, and well. they were neglected, right? They were strong enough for a long enough time that like yeah. it wasn't like, oh man, Cruel Boys all of a sudden are the thing. It's like, you know, people had Night Hunt and they yeah. probably used the Night Hunt army, which was like 85% the same army they needed. Yeah. just go win that rtd <laughs> yeah and, and and the hilarious thing was like that you know there's always that uh uh that conspiracy right of mm-hmm. oh that army is getting the uh uh the super overpowered oh, yeah. just to just to sell models and it's like that, everybody already has lot. these models man yeah <laughs> like uh like i even have like a full night hunt army i don't even need to like go out and buy one Right, like yeah, I'm yeah. telling my wife to come out of retirement with her night out and play some more. She'll win some more tournaments just by accident. Yeah, but do it. Uh, but uh, do it. the sheer intimidation factor of putting down that many ghosts on the table, like people oh, just start God. proactively shaking their hands. Like I don't know what I did, but everyone here is really friendly, and they're giving me a medal. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, and I, I do want to say uh, two two things too. One, the OBR build with the Nagash. What? That was at the narrative thing too, man. Narrative, like the these all these tournament lists, I just recently saw all over the place. I didn't realize there's still tournament lists. This shit's just it's just so much good stuff right now. So many yeah. good models, so many good units, and all these different armies. God models feel impactful. Cavalry feel good. Hey um, man. What does this well, what does this points update look like? Oh Night man. Night Hunt, Night Hunt yeah. get their uh get ephemeral nerfed. feet knocked out from under them we okay. should have a few predictions on this like yeah what, what do we okay. think is going to happen with the points up I'll, I'll throw a couple hot zingers out there i do yeah, think me. i yeah, agree yeah, with yeah. night haunt i think that lumineth are going to get hit in the fox department and the um <laughs> and the, yep, and the, bow, the ruse the bow rider rue uh-huh. department what does the that's fox scary. say it says ouch yeah. my nerf, head nerf 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 <laughs> nerf nerf nerf, nerf. <laughs> Um, you know, oh, I think yeah. we'll see a little bit with Agridons, probably. Okay. Agridons will, well, I don't know. It's local meta that I'm running into either yeah. netless, but I, I haven't really kept up with worldless, which is uh-huh. definitely what like they're looking at, right? Like the mm-hmm. worldwide tally. So I haven't yeah, really yeah. looked at that, but like I would imagine Agridons go up, uh, Star Strikes go up, or whatever the, the little pokey stick ones for yep, uh, yep. seraphon go up yeah. as well as those dumbasses the with the bear. bolas those <laughs> those things It'll those tell things you like have... them the way you talk about it <laughs> tell me, show me on this doll where they hurt you matt uh in every charge every single charge they've hurt me uh, um okay. Okay. i imagine those three units from uh seraphon go Mm-hmm. go up in points hopefully mm-hmm. the bolas get a change in errata something because that's just a little bit too powerful what it is for what okay. it is um what else oh maggotkin's got to go down it's got to go down in points yeah yeah i i, I think so i'm actually gonna get a chance to play uh, our patreon scott shout out to you scott tomorrow yeah uh, we're gonna have a catch up you know i uh, see his maggotkin in the flesh and they're beautifully painted so it's gonna be real fun mm, you know? get his picks but- Drum. Yeah, sure will. Cool. Sure will. I'll good, try to good, good. bring my fully, almost fully painted uh, Slaves of Darkness variant. I've been trying a, a funky right. thing out recently, which maybe well. I should throw out to the Patreon here. I, I have a theory that okay. the best version of them, or maybe I'm just being countercultural, is not just Oops All nice. Bearing Guard good stuff, which is also very effective, mm-hmm. but is to work in the Dark Oath and take the Dark Oath sub faction, but have like a module. So you're going to have like a spawning show up in funny places kill lone mm-hmm. things you know set yourself up for tactics and take back okay. objectives kind of stuff so okay. i actually take gunner brand <laughs> in those oh. regiments because he's like sneakily incredibly efficient because it gives yep. you two heroes gunner and his daughter 
and then yeah. like the a free wizard essentially with like six or a blade of wounds and the other two guys can hold their own in the fight sure. and also it's one of the best models aos has ever released in that wizard so yeah. cool so yeah. cool so so like you have these three little units and two of those heroes are there just to allow you to use the ability and the sub faction mm-hmm. right you know or to activate yeah. like marauders dying so I, I was taking them like that along with 20 marauders and mm-hmm. five of the javelin guys and a dark yeah. oath willerfane to be real spicy and the idea is to use these things as sacrificial cover while there's still a bellicor and some chosen and some furies and some other stuff to get to get the work done mm-hmm. and of course man he's yeah he's so good right now best war scroll it feels like in the game that ability is good what do we he's Bellicor. he's like amazing so hot he's right amazing now. so hot right uh, now so hot the um, console <laughs> yeah. but yeah I, uh, uh, it's been fun so far playing around with that i've won a couple games with it but i'm not okay. sure i've dialed it in yet i'm just trying to figure uh, that out <laughs> do you think you see an increase in vanguard coming in they seem uh, to be everywhere I don't know. I don't think Varengard are that good. People like them, and I have six, but like I just I'm never comfortable using them. I mean, they're too expensive. They're three hundred ten points for fifteen woods. Yeah, <laughs> I have nine I feel of them, good. and I haven't even put them together. Like I just like Chaos Knights. Oh sure, sure. Chaos Knights feel good. Like yeah, it's it's five hundred points, but you get thirty or you know, forty woods, forty woods yep. of that, mm-hmm. and you know that's like a big brick. I mean, I guess I, I guess to go on the Varengard for a second, like the, the thing which just makes me like have a heart palpitation every time I use them mm-hmm. is they have no ward anymore unless you've yes. got some a hundred percent. Yeah. You yep. you can't you can't like survive against like much of anything. All someone needs to do is sneak five wounds through. They even on, have like, a they don't have man. a spell ignore anymore either. No, they don't. Yeah. They, don't. they got like whatever they get off of buffs, if you do manage to like do some shenanigans like with uh you know, getting like an Eye of God's roll or mm-hmm. maybe being near a shrine. But until you get that rolling, like let's say you have three. Someone hits you with like a couple mortal wound spells, you're down to two Baron Guard. Two Baron yep. Guard are so much less gas to get things mm-hmm. done for yeah. their points. And you're never yeah. going to roll like five roll dice for a rally. That's not happening. <laughs> mm-hmm. And if somebody throws out a purple sun and you get <clears throat> hit with a grave tide on the charge, I mean, they not really gonna have that much to do with that amount of attacks coming at yeah. you with damage too yeah i mean i'm not to say that they're not good and, and doing damage and getting stuff done they can't you can't like win tournaments with them obviously people do it's just i don't like that swingy feeling when i look at them even though they're fun. yeah <laughs> yeah and if you again if your game plan for winning events is hey let's not run into any faction that has like an unlimited d3 mortal wound spell i don't know that that's the best game plan exactly like nagash looks at like that list and just like erases it yeah 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 and, yeah. and like list. well mm. and even just like anything that pops like poops mortal room wounds like executioners from cities on the charge boom yeah. boom, boom 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 boom, yeah. boom. just yeah. get a couple in on the charge and you know and that's even talking about cities now with points too they're in a weird spot because everyone wa- seems to be trying to make humans to work but they don't really seem like they're working that well you're looking for the elves to do these mortal wounds but it's dwarves that are carrying they're not even necessarily that popular mm-hmm. and you bring out hammers that can have their ward save still and do all these I mean, things they're rough they're really rough to get through yeah um yeah that seems like the durability right i mean i don't know it's, it's yeah scary. the durability keeps them in the game far longer yep. but as soon as you get the rune lord then mm-hmm. they're out so like Skaven, yeah. uh, Stormcast, uh, Hero sniping uh, abilities, Sylvaneth, here. man, yeah. Sylvaneth, yeah. absolutely Fair ruined in a their weird day. Spot. They, they, they have the same problem they've always had, which is they have too many elite units mm-hmm. and no, no units that are able to just do well-rounded things, right? Like everything that they have is specialized for one purpose and one purpose only. Oh, you talking about the Sylvaneth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and with uh, Sylvaneth too, they're balanced around their trees that just die now, which Man. you can charge. Ugh. Yeah, and yeah, just kill them. The, and that's that's. I mean, the trees themselves give you what three battle tactics. Yep. Yeah, like I just went up against. Uh, I was just talking about how I went up against James. So I was practicing for a Sparkle Party, mm-hmm. uh, using my daughter Sakane, and like. I won the game literally by just destroying some trees. Like, yeah, the know? terrain piece, not even the tree pull. I'd like, 
yeah like by the end of the game i was i was angry at the game because <laughs> i was yeah. like this shouldn't be happening because the hunters are insanely good hunters with bows yep. are disturbingly good yeah. just snipe out your characters and then just shoot 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 at a 20 inch range so yep. good i see points for those going up and then almost everything else in sylvaneth going down honestly yeah mm-hmm. that, that makes sense i i'm quite curious about the, the points adjustment when it comes but i'm also a little bit like i don't know like not really excited for it like i'm not like mm-hmm. on the edge of my seat part of it might be just like the low 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 likelihood of me being able to get like a tournament in between now and like next year based upon you know incoming baby state um the Ooh. oh yeah <laughs> that, mm-hmm. that is not good for tournament attendance for the record it, yeah. It, it, yeah yeah um but the other part is like the slaves to darkness book is like the third one right it's going out after the first two so yeah so you're waiting for that yeah it's, that's the one really let's we'll see what happens there for yeah. this current Round around the sun with the with this army. <laughs> yeah. As as per the usual, I picked the army that I think is probably going to be the last one to get an update. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To hang on for a little while and just let the points decrease go as the lethality of the game goes up. So eventually, yeah. I'll have like four hundred snakes on the board, and then it'll be sure. instead of orc on pork, it's snaked ladies. You know, just mm-hmm. everywhere. Um, nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Snaked. <laughs> snake and ladies uh, and this is gonna be for me probably the first time i don't think i want to go to my stormcast at the beginning of the edition normally i'm big on that and of my other armies rest but you know we've got good indexes i've got yeah. other armies you know i'm looking at my turtle for my divkin if she can get a good points drop i'll swap out as zinch if not i'm having a fun time with zinch and i want to see what that the army i just went four one with what can it do in a real tournament I think it's they are fun, probably. Man. You should do it. Yeah, pro- Z- Zinch are probably going to get some tweaks in points. I think just because, mm-hmm. like, it, it they somehow became the boogeyman. Like over the past yeah. two weeks, like everybody's just like, "Oh man, this they're scary now." Like they're scary good. I and like yeah, I get it. Point sink. It's, but like, it's you know it's, if you're running the big aura minus when they hit all my demons and i'm running all demons yeah yeah i mean i guess it's they're they're more forgiving than they've ever been to play right yes like with mm-hmm. old zinch you make a mistake that could be your game mm-hmm. right yeah um, zinch had diehard players for a very long time so mm-hmm. now that it's more forgiving it's allowed them to learn the game quicker than they mm-hmm. probably would have in the past and their skill ceiling has just gone up and up and up. And mm-hmm. you've got good players on a good army yep. and, and having a good time. So I don't know. Oh, go on, Jack. I was saying, I, I think you're right. And and like some of those new combos uh, where the strength lies is just shining. Like we, mm-hmm. we just had talked about Michael last episode about mm-hmm. his face off, you know, top and Nova, you know, with Caleb. Yeah. And- you know, was it 12 Skyfires rolling around with all the other stuff you can do with Destiny Dice? It's super yeah. scary. Very so now brutal. all of a sudden you have really strong shooting out of the already strong magic, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. casting, you know, faction. And I don't know, it's, it's a new age for the change. Yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah. I still want them to have an anchor unit that isn't just blobs of horrors. <clears throat> I got to say that. Like, yeah. I mean, I mean that like, being said, like, Zangar go in. Yeah, go into well. I mean, Zangar are nice. They are nice. Yeah. They're actually pretty good in this edition. I think they're getting slept on just because horrors are so much more of a just like a sit and you know let people beat the yeah. shit out of them. Yeah, but yeah. like Zangors, you can actually go on the offensive. Like there, I believe there is still a plus one Ren spell in there somewhere, if I remember correctly. Um, I mean, they get exploding sixes to hit at least in, in enemy territory. The foot Zangor, so you know. Yeah, we're, we're we're buckets of dice and attacks here, mm-hmm. and I can pull mm-hmm. out the the spell look again. I do have it up because I've been going through it. Um, Zanch. But while I'm looking at this, what are some other armies? What are some other things you you're interested in seeing change? Oh, seeing change. So that's a like like what what's up with these endless spells too? With how are we going to rebalance the like, morbid? conjuration if everyone's so, still just taking it i think so 
I think their separation of spells and making them free is actually a great idea because then they can change them at any point mm -hmm. in time. It's not, you know, linked mm -hmm. to linked to an army or anything as far as like how lists are going to be built from a points perspective. Sure. So if they do change the rules, yeah. Uh the you know, Purple Sun is gonna get, you know, Purple Sun's gonna be the only one that is fine because it hasn't really done anything outside of all the other it's, spells. It's such a pain in the butt to get out. And the fact yeah. that you can't just drop it and move it really changes how good it is. <laughs> yeah. It really changes it. And so like I think I think they'll probably just get a slight nerf and they since they're independent of everything else, like mm -hmm. you can actually do a rewrite and it's not like game breaking because now it's got a rewrite and then points and yada yada okay. yada. It's not gonna be as much of a change. I mean, people are just going to have that like, oh, they did me dirty. Like, they, we're still going to have players coming up with like the shaking hands, setting their coffee down, rings under their eyes, going, oh no, morbid conjurations. Yeah. Uh, right. But and also, real quick for the fact check in here, mm -hmm. so we've got Shield of Faith, the ward save, and maybe minus one to be hit on a unit, Infernal Gateway for Mortal Wounds. Mm -hmm. glimpse of the future to regrow a destiny <laughs> dice or re-roll some stuff transform to spawn hmm. to mortal wounds and maybe get a spawn the teleport spell fold reality and bolt of zinch so there is not mm. in the spell lores the extra ren spell i'm wondering what i'm forgetting oh it was purple sun just being the aura maybe ren. there is there was a list Might idea i've i've had for a long time with just well since i saw the the um wow. the war scrolls the new mm -hmm. the new oh, war sure. scrolls drop that's all zangors and there was a way to make them very well, brutal. One hit from the sky fires yeah but, but there there's there's something else i was thinking about can give anyways we'll figure it out yeah, we'll figure, figure it out, it out. We'll i figure want to know it. because i'm going to end up playing it once we figure this shit out so We'll see. We'll see. I'll Go look through it. I'll look through it. I, I so many, it. so many fun army options. You know, there are. You know, Rocco really got me thinking about like all the executioners. Right. Earlier, I do have sixty of them. Dude, yeah. Honestly, they put out more damage than almost anything else I've run into so far. The only mm -hmm. thing that I have seen throw out more damage. Is my daughters of Cain? Yeah, fully um, but with buff unit of witch elves with mind razor will. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh no, 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 oh, not even snakes? that. Snakes, you throw blood, throw a mind razor on some blood yeah. sisters and then give them run and charge. Make sure that they get as close as you can. Yeah, roll an eight inch charge if you're going into a monster or uh, mm. you know, sons of behemoth. Or if you're going into a one wound or two wound model, all you have to do is roll a three and they're striking last, right? Yeah. That's so so true. that's uh then you combo that with a Malusai iron skill who gives mm -hmm. them a plus one attack if they chain off of her. So that's mm -hmm. three attacks each base. Yep. Uh minus one rand, uh threes and fours in the beginning of the game. Um, and you're really just looking for sixes because that's three mortal wounds per six. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty fair. I do it. I do it. I uh, um, and you can make them fight twice. So are they getting touched with points? Because I thought daughters wasn't doing so hot recently. What? So so that's kind of why I really wanted to. What's play the them. question? The yeah. question is how do you keep them alive? Because they lost a lot of the buffs that keep them alive. So what you Gosh, have to do yeah. is it's. It's it's the thing that I like to do, which is learn how to play the core rules on hard mode. Mm. You have a way out and you have a specific way that you can build. But if you're playing it on hard mode, you're learning the mistakes much more concise mm -hmm. than you are by having a happy accident that got you through it, right? Sure, sure, sure. I, I think that's true. Like when you're playing on the edge of like victory and defeat is like really the small micro decisions or like finding that path you are forced to get good <laughs> mm -hmm. you know in those tournaments and those practice games yeah oh, too fun yeah all right i got one more for you rocco make okay. your heart happy so i looked at my boxes yeah i do for some reason have 120 assembled dark Elf corsairs yeah so i could also just do, do the do dread it. pirate the dread pirate okay Jack. okay do it, do it. yeah so that makes my heart even happier i don't know if y'all know this but when i was running intro games for people 
I <clears> would <throat> do uh, Black Art Corsairs was the army for it because it was an army that in, in second and a third that was uh, I could play up with it because it was so good, but it was also mm-hmm. just fun to play against because you're just swashbuckling pirates. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, throw a Charybdis in there to either soften the list or do whatever because it was a cool monster. And yep, yep. That is, those is still, <laughs> they're still good. If you wanted to play up, you just take the saves away from everything yeah. and then just shoot them mm-hmm. to death. Yeah, whatever it is, Archeon's gone. Anvil Guard right. lives, baby. I don't care yeah. what they say. I'm just kind of digging the worst for a lot of its own. So, like, if yeah, you think about it, right. Like, if if you take the shooting sub action, not a city's player, so you know, yeah. just call it that. Plus three inch range yeah. and everything. So their little hand bows, shooting combat hand bows, are thirteen inch range now. Yeah, you know, it's not that bad of a points economy. Five up saves for ten models. You know, 120 points. But mm-hmm. every time they make an unmodified save roll of a six for combat attack, you reflect mm-hmm. a mortal wound. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> you know, mortal damage. They are so... great screens and small units. They're in a big block where yep. they're going against volume attacks. They're amazing for that. Mm-hmm. On average, you get three back. I mean, that's mm-hmm. a lot of that's a lot of volume coming back for rallies, yeah. right? It's that damn buckler from every other person that ever had it, whether it was the ogres, whether it was the mm-hmm. witch elves back in the day, the sisters of slaughter. That, they still got it. They still yeah, got it. and that's still terrifying to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, reflective mortal wounds. They just they, they ugh, and we got it. Yep. Yeah. On the it's other good. side, I do think the humans in cities do have a place. I think it's not the conventional way that people want to play them. And that's the thing, right? Like, Mm -hmm. Walk me through this. Make me a cities player again. Let me stop my elf and my zinch bullshit, Matt. What do you got for me? So I really want the Cavaliers. I really want them to work, right? Mm -hmm. And they could potentially work, but they're a big point sink for an admittedly kind of disappointing melee unit with fours and fours, right? Thank you. Because everyone saw that and they're like, oh, but, you know, it's the volume of attacks. They're three up saved. They're three wounds each. But everyone else has their cavalry at three wounds each. Everyone else has got shit at mm-hmm. the same armor mm-hmm. save, but they're hitting on threes and threes over here. Now you can make you can you can throw stuff on them, but you have to like super buff uh, a yeah. reinforced unit, and then you're yeah. putting a lot of points into one tactic, which you can literally just get stopped. And unless you have Talia, you know, mm-hmm. there's another point stink, right? If you yep. really want to make the most of them, I actually really like the. Uh, the do the captain fusilier guy on the war hulk yep and i need to get another one and then uh two units of 20 fusiliers yep and then steel helms 10 10 yes. 10, 10 10 10 spaced out right love my steel helms for that right? i know what you're talking about yeah yep, so yep. space them out there's no way to really get in there and then okay. just move up the field move up the field move up the field don't waste mm-hmm. any points on getting any of the special characters it's bods not gods, right? Gods, mm-hmm. not gods. All right, and and just put as many useless, pathetic imperial. Go- I mean, uh, cities <laughs> of Sigmar <laughs> up yep. the field, and the secret is that by the time they get through all the steel helms, yeah, some of which have consecrated at this point, so they've yep. got you know the shrug and all that. By the yep. time they get through all the steel helms, you now have a unit. That just needs to like if you, you know where you're going to get charged when somebody's coming at you, right? For the yeah. most part, you know when you're going to get charged. So currently, the fusiliers have two shooting profiles. You mm-hmm. have the stand still and shoot, mm-hmm. and you have the uh, move and shoot. Yep. Only the Third movement shoot has shoot in combat. Yes. So if you know you're going to get charged. They've already spent their time trying to get through everything. You've already been shooting at them this whole time. You've got mm-hmm. plus one to hit. Um, and then there is the artifact that the, uh, the ogre dude gives the yep. um, for his command as well, right? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So you can give that some great cannons, which are your ways of killing everything because now you've got the plus one to hit from the War Hulk. And plus just three inches of range all from kill, everybody with kill. a gun. Mm-hmm. You don't have to actually use an anti-hero thing on a hero to make it good. You can use yep. it to make the rest of your army good and then yep. snipe out the heroes, right? Yeah. Take care of the threats. Play a little 40k in your Age of Sigmar, I guess, right? Uh, that's Always. for KO to do. Always, always shooting, 
in your opponent's face. Always be right? shooting. So ABL, always okay. be always be shooting. And then my again, abs. when they when you know you're gonna get charged, just redeploy so you can shoot in combat on the next turn. Mm. Take all the guys out that are gonna be in the way, shoot them. Oh well, Matt, There's I've got a question. The, the, this Imperial Guard business is sounding great. Mm-hmm. But in cities, oh, outside of cities and in cities, every order or army and the grandmother is bringing out Callus and Toll. Yeah, points are going up. Yeah, but how 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 high do we got to go before everyone goes? You know, maybe I could I could just take something in my own army. I don't even know. How many how many points are three there? up four up? What? Hmm? How many points are there now? I think they're That's like the thirty. If they're two thirty, and they go 230. to two sixty. People are going to say they're too much for 260. I bet you, because they barely fit in lists, and you kind of almost have to build a list around them because oh, wow. they're there to take battle tactics. And once they hit yes. 260, that's almost a god instead of those, right? Mm-hmm. 260 to 300. I don't ever see them going to 300, but I could definitely see 260, especially for their toughness. Yeah. But yeah. the thing is, like, if you look through a lot of the armies and you stop looking at the immediate, like, net lists and big takes that everybody's mm-hmm. taking, like, mm-hmm. if you stop looking at Vanguard, you can very much see that there are other units out there that can strip wards, making yep. Callus and Toll completely useless. Stormcast, the one little model that nobody ever bought, now has one of the most powerful pieces of tech. Which one's that? It is the Knight Relictor. The individual yeah, little Knight Relictor that can strip. Edition. He oh. can strip you of a ward save, and mm-hmm. that's from outside of your drop range. So all you have to do is get in place with your Paladors, yeah. drop your little Knight Relictor next to that unit. Okay. Uh, let's say that's in Nurgle and has so many wounds, and all of a sudden your Paladors are swinging easy. It does feel weirdly reliable. It's happened to me mm-hmm. once in the game, and yeah, I managed to break out of it, but I was like, oh. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But like almost threat. like about half of the armies have the potential to strip those wards. And as soon as I think everybody yeah. gets through like the ooh, the big flashy easy pieces and starts going for the well, what else can I take? Because this list is getting boring to play, even to win, yeah. right? Then we'll okay. start seeing like the real little little gems, the diamonds in the rough coming up. And that okay. will be fun because then Callus and Toll will just be nothing. They're nothing without I could finally city. find a box of them because I wanted them just for mm-hmm. my city stuff. Like I'll use them as DD minis. Like they're, they're the models are great, but yeah, they, oh, everyone right, and their grandmother's freaking buying them. I have like, I have the other box, the one that got um not the not the wildborn hunter whatever it is but the other release uh that came out for underworlds the stormcast underworlds band no it's the the other cities one it's not the the one with the two guys in the coat which is adorable yeah the um the one that the one that looks like an the witch hunters the yeah the witch hunters whatever hexbane hunters yeah oh yeah those guys were so cool yeah yeah yeah, the you models know. are beautiful. Those, but you could just use those. Just say this is Callus and Toll. They don't have any yeah. rules now, right? I, I feel like my my beloved Gunner brand that is outbound are like the cool evil counterpart to Callus and Toll. Yeah, but they have not they have not caught on nearly as much. But I'm I'm thinking it right. I, I mean, I'm just going to carry that standard. I agree. I, I mean, agree. I keep I keep building lists with them in them, and I'm like, and I'm I'm at that <laughs> point like I'm doing the opposite, uh, Mason. Mm-hmm where it's like i'm going to dedicate myself to this army until i get good enough at the game playing this army and then i can go to playing something that's a little bit easier right and i feel like even like an all dark oath army is probably a little bit easier (laughs) because at least you have guys coming back but like i don't know oh i I don't know I, I i do have the gunner brand I have I have enough to do an all dark oath, and that sounds like a really fun project. It does. Um, it it is the most fun project, Matt. But I gotta tell you, as having just literally built and painted a whole dark oath army, like the only things I have that need to be painted to have like all the dark oath, really, you know, functionally are 
Gunner Brand and his guys, and then then it'll be done. Because I have the four painted wilder fiends, I have sixty marauders, yeah. I have yeah, five yeah. painted dudes, I have you know you a the guy who's a chieftain, I have a model that I can use for like war chiefs or whatever okay. war queens. Okay. There's always more I could paint or, or get some more of the the range sure, in sure, there, sure, but sure, like. Sure. I got the footprint down. Maybe paint some broadsword guys, but we're not suffering for lack of choice. Mm-hmm. And the difference, the, the sheer difference between kind of what they were right before they flipped into oh, yeah. the new edition versus now. Yeah. They're still fun, but like it does feel like sort of a, a shadow. Like all of the uh, stuff got toned down really dramatically. And you yeah. can only bring back one thing and only in a three plus mm-hmm. in your turn. So yeah. oh. it's a lot less reliable. <laughs> It is a lot less reliable. Um, they're definitely they do feel like they want to patch on to like a unit of knights or like two units of knights, or if you want to yeah. go warrior heavy, right? Like they really feel like they want to patch into the rest of Slaves to Darkness. Like one I, of the yeah. other lists that I've been building with them is like half Dark Oath, half Theradon, which is like, hey, if you make it through those Dark Oath, then here's some Theradon. Have fun, have at it right Mm -hmm. because those things just wreck anything they walk into it's so true and obviously anything could change the points balances or like that new book but at least right now i I think that's the way to get some value out of them because you don't want to go like full dark oath like it's too much dark oath right now you want it to be like creating flexibility or stuff or options around like the hard-hitting core but then Mm -hmm. when i was telling you about like that list is you know one regiment with gunner the 20 dark oath singri and the osorn and the Mm -hmm. second regiment which is basically Bellacor, Ten Nurgle Chosen, Furies, the Fell Riders, yeah. and the Wilderfane, then a Sorcerer Lord. But I mean, the fact that yeah. all that other stuff, like, it doesn't have to always come back, but something will die. And yeah. then three up, it's like the only way to, like, I have to get stuff in your backfield mm. and then charge you, you know, on as like kind of a surprise on my turn. It's like, it's super interesting because there's no other options in the whole book or, you know, yeah. scroll right now to kind of do movement manipulation in that way but mm-hmm. when you can tack that on to like the chosen doing their thing or bellicor doing their thing it's like it's just destabilizing enough to, to feel like real real good but if yeah. i didn't have the chosen at bellicor i just don't have any punch <laughs> okay yeah i mean the they they do lack that pretty heavily like and i have like uh, I think I doubled up the sets of the Dark Oath, so I have mm-hmm. enough for a full new Dark Oath army, um, plus the old models that I had, but the new Conan models were just too pretty not to get them when oh, they were yeah. super cheap. Can't when blame you find a deal, you, 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 you fall into that capitalism. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you just trip and fall Oops. right into it, that plastic crack. Well, here, here I got another question then, fellas, while, while mm-hmm. we're here. So, with the new books that are going to be coming out along the way here, are are we expecting them to be, you know, like crazier and more in depth than all the indexes? Has more stuff come out? Have we? Well, have you heard the rumor about the Skaven book? You tell me. Well, it's pretty much the same from what I've heard as the indexes, just with a couple new units. Although, okay. admittedly, I finally get plastic acolytes. I'm sorry. Right. So yeah, uh, there goes my wallet for the next six years as I buy 400 rats mm. with gas balls. I'm real curious about that, actually. You know, Rocco, I mean, I feel like I've heard the uh-huh. same where Matt has. I even heard that they kind of like messed with some of the stuff that people were liking, but mm-hmm. yeah. you know, I don't want it to be like massively overpowered because it was kind of lame if it's just like every new book that comes out crushes everything that doesn't have a book yet, yeah. but I also. I kind of wanted to develop the army a bit more, not just like in the floor set or the lore section, but like you know, kind of create more of that depth in the in what the units are doing than the index has had. So, like my worst case scenario is if like I spend fifty bucks and buy like that Slaves of Darkness book, and it's basically just like a, a slim reprint of what's already in the index. I'm mm-hmm. like, well, here's yeah. three more years of this being exactly this way. <laughs> well, yeah, and and. Like we we know what it is. It's the the monetization of the platform to move you to the app, right? Mm-hmm. And it like good on them if it keeps the company around. I think Age of Sigmar 4.0 is probably the most fun competitive game I think mm-hmm. I've ever played. To be honest, I, I'd agree. I'd agree. Oh yeah. Um, I get moving is. the reactions to the end of the of the phases for things. It the game flows better. Yeah, it, and it, it's, it makes more sense. Like I'm. 
I'm here for it. Um, I do. I do wonder if because when we saw the release of 10th edition, they only gave you one battalion, which is our form of yeah. like sub allegiance, right? Yeah. Um, My own are with. still. I, I need something else, man. That's why I've stayed with AOS so much. I'm just. We were the boogeyman by accident, like how Nighthawk popped up out of seemingly nowhere. Uh, and but, nerf and nerf and nerf and now it's like cool nah I, I i can't i can't man i can't sit there and sit for an entire 30 minute turn when somebody just shoots me off the table there's just yeah. no engagement there right which is no. where, like you know i can i can see the books introducing new models i don't think there's a lot of models to pad yeah. some of the armies with so like if we are getting books that are essentially the same thing with the same allegiances and like minor mm -hmm. tweaks it's going to be kind of disappointing i won't lie but with skaven we're seeing a ton coming out oh. um a ton of new models right and a couple of new war scrolls we got like four five that sounds like that. right that sounds yeah. right whereas with like stormcast we're probably going to get a ton as well right Every city, they, they got rid of our sacrosanct stuff all of a sudden. We're going to get a whole new. I could have just kept my Thundercats, man. Don't get me wrong. The, the Griff Riders with the Lancers are cool, but. they. I'm, I'm sorry. I am not a fan of those models. Like, uh -huh. <laughs> I know. Well, I mean, I have Palidors, man. I said, Mr. Those Palador, are, how do you feel? Yeah. Like, I have never seen a, a model trying to be as dynamic as that, but somehow just looking like this, you know, mm -hmm. just. For the mm -hmm. people who are listening on the podcast, it looks like you just like one arm is up and one arm is down. Like the old Marauders, yeah. like the old Chaos Marauders that look like they were stuck in, yeah. uh, you know, like they were a uh, a bathroom sign man that was just Ooh. moving a little bit, you know, like that kind of problem. Uh, yeah. They, they yeah. look so yeah. static in their motion, whereas the dynamic motion of some of the older models i have a feeling i'm going to miss a lot of that as the game sculpting evolves right so yeah it is what it is it's what it is Try maybe to they'll be good focus back i don't know uh, larry yeah oh well i'll have right. to see a lot of mystery head gas <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but okay as long as they've learned their lesson from the dragons in third edition, then I'm happy. I'd rather have, have, have they, have they, I'd rather have Skaven come out and seem underwhelming because there's nothing broken as opposed mm -hmm. to people still being trained that, okay, this new book came out, something's broken. This okay. new book came out, something's okay. broken. Right. And we've seen that happen a lot with 40 K over every release. Uh, mm -hmm. that's happened with all the books people are actually kind of like upset that's like oh there's nothing's really broken in here like maybe there was a necron book uh piece for a little while that got like shut down right away mm -hmm. yeah um like somebody got one tournament out of it but what it does is it keeps a consistency that i don't think any of the game player base is used to from games workshop yeah which makes it unnerving but also in retrospect really nice like i should i should want to show up to a table and be like okay i have some sort of a chance against this army right yeah but then why do we feel like if aos isn't getting the radical oh here's the new book with all the new cool toys and shit you know we're like oh it'll be a little disappointing if they don't spice it up a little bit what do we if it's just a reprint well, it it's can't be a stuff. reprint, right? There's a just right level, like Goldilocks, okay. Three Bears, Porridge level. Like it can't be like bland reprint, everything perfectly balanced, because that is too boring. Mm -hmm. But it also mm -hmm. can't be so asymmetrically overpowering that like every new book is just like some like advanced, you know, future state coming back in time to crush the medievals. <laughs> you know, it has to yeah. be something where somebody can actually bring that to a tournament or something and feel good about what they're doing with it. Not just like, Oh, of course you brought it because you brought the whatever. Mm, then everyone's yeah. fun gets destroyed and it stops being a competitive game. What you like. <laughs> well, and I mean, one of the other things that I don't think, you know, we're, we're always talking about units, how they work together, how much fun we have playing games. One of the things we haven't really touched much on is the lore, right? It's usually in passing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Doug from 2 Plus Tough had a great read on his preview on the Skaven book where they he actually talks about heavy lore because Skaven 
uh, now actually have a chaos god for realsies, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, like, if they are going to introduce lore in the books, I'm, you know, I'm here for it. I I love the books. I I crack them open. I get that new book smell. I know it's not for yeah. everyone. You can go to Wahapedia and waste your time trying to figure out how to do all that shit. Mm-hmm. Says the UX designer. Uh, but the uh, you know the. I think I think the books as they come in allow are it's probably going to be army dependent. I hope that we don't yeah. stick to that one model per army thing that we got for a little while towards the end. Yeah. Oh, you Outside mean when they have like a refresh. big release and like here's your hero? Yeah, yeah. Um, Deepkin don't need another hero, man. We don't. We're all right. We could use a little little fire Deepkin, slayers. Deepkin KO, need crab riders. Units. Deepkin yes. need crab riders. Crib. All the Marylanders rejoice as one. If they were to release one faction that has not even been contemplated for this particular edition, I know we've talked about it before, but I really want them to bring those like undead pirates out. Yeah. Like the crab riding ones that they had like in mm-hmm. the old Warhammer and that they had yep. in like the Warhammer Total War games were just yep. such a good concept. It's basically Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> yeah, 100%. 100%. What would you want, Morocco? Ah, uh, what would I want as a new faction? Mm-hmm. As a new faction, as its own book. All right, so I really liked the teasers about like the what was it the silent people, the bug people that were mm-hmm. in one of the uh, the underworlds. Oh, the ones in biomes. the mountains. Yeah. yeah, the ones yeah. in the mountain. If we could, our version of Tyranids. I think would be so interesting. Yeah. Um, and they weren't human. They yeah, were they something were not human. else. Something else, something completely different. All right, I got another one for us. I think this would right. be really good. What okay. would be so fine. And also, I know that deep inside you, Rocco, cast aside this competitive window dressing. We know oh, there's sure. a narrative player. You're going to love yeah. this. Yeah. Hey, they got to bring back the drogue rook. They just got to find like the village where they're all hiding or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> and they got to <laughs> yank. Yeah, <sighs> and then like Kragnos has to be like, "See you later, losers." I don't know why you would follow me around for four years. And then <laughs> remove the ability of all the other destruction factions that take him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that would chaos. be that would be interesting, uh, and. All all Iron Jaws players would suddenly cry in fear, as well as uh, Gargants, right? Yeah, and Ogre players. Oh, okay. everyone, yeah. Would, everyone would be very upset. He's propping up reason. their books. Yeah, a three d six charge does a lot. I think anti monster attack. Ah, for me, I'd love to see Famir. Obviously, I know that's, that's never going to happen. No. Yep, yep. My sad, happy Famir army. We'll sit yeah. there being sad and happy all at once. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't I don't honestly know what else I would want out of the game. Something that's not elves. No more elves. Fine. <clears throat> Be reasonable. Hmm. I want the chaos dwarves. Yeah. Some chaos dwarves. I feel like they're coming. Like they're literally already there in all the books. <laughs> It's in a lot of yeah. the lore. It's in the Fire Slayers lore from like the first edition book. It's a, mm-hmm. it's cruel boys with the Hobgrot Slitters haven't they? They come over yeah. there, they trade, they cities things, chaos things. We've seen the war bands for uh for uh Iron Golems. Like they got one. Golems, yep. yeah. Horns of Hashit. Horns of Hashit. Yep. Lily serving hash it. and even even like on the maps in the newest book, like you know, yeah, in, in the mm-hmm. current core rule book, there's plenty of maps that show like essentially chaos or folds. Yeah, like, there's one, yeah. there's one right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I'd, I'd go with them. I'd go with them, and mm-hmm. I would imagine they'd have to be like the the underground answer, or I guess mm-hmm. no, because fire slayers already have that with the uh, with the priests, right? Because they can already tunnel underground. Yes, we'd have to figure out something else like dwarves that don't live in the sky, dwarves yeah. that don't live underground, or city dwarves. But I mean, actually, give me like... give me some clockwork soldier bullshit mm-hmm. from Grugney. Yeah, you know, kind of all, all, all killicans. Wait, wait, they, they are the only ones who live underground now because the regular dwarves live in the cities, 
right? Yep. They no longer have mountain holds. Those are all yep. like goblinoid things now. Yep. Um, and the other ones are this guy. So yeah, they're like the only ones who have a proper dwarf hold. Fire, fire slayers live underground. <laughs> they yeah, live on saying. a mountain. Well, they live in a lodge, right? Like a mm-hmm. fiery it's, it's lodge. In, it's inside the volcano. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we've got we've got um when the fire slayer box versus the deepkin. We we learned about the lore mm-hmm. about them invading the hold to steal all the souls and the dude that the rune smith that buffs everybody for all the dead dwarves and you can can screw with the aether not aether gold with the um it, it's it's almost two in the morning forgive me for being no no little, you're you're, eh, no, no, you're, on, you're on to something here, but i think we figured it out right, so, so there, 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 there is a distinction here so like there are two subset of dwarves who live arguably inside a thing underground yep. there's the chaos dwarves yet to be yep. released and awesome who are proper dwarves but evil yep and then you have a bunch of naked orange dwarves who were effectively just sitting in the you know housing equivalent of a finished sauna because they're yep. unclothed and constantly by the heat. <laughs> yep. And sulfur. How did they survive? Yeah, that's impressive with that constitution, but very different. Again, I'm an elf lover, so I don't get it anyway. I just I just want to shave them and be done with it. I know you're just waiting for Malarian, like half of us. We know everyone. It. Everyone oh. wants that. Everyone wants that. It's a tease, mm. but you know, guys, he I made think that... the arena with the, that the Stormcast trained in. He was in the main lore for the launch of the freaking game, man. Hey, man, Slanish wasn't in there. Slanish had its day. It was that 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 fucking prison. I don't mm-hmm. know. I know. I know, Jack. You want to you want to go off and you know and, and the pocket. I get it, but the prison Tyrion. Valerian, the, the prison's been under siege by Archeon, I think, twice now in the war. They've busted a bunch of chains off of mm-hmm. uh, off of them. <laughs> where where, where are we going to go? Not a worry. I, I hear you there, and, and that's worth a tangent because, you know, as an OG diehard Slanesh Hedonites player, mm-hmm. literally, we've had, like, one god tied behind our back, like, the entire game. The you whole know? game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we're still doing pretty good for all that. Yeah. Like, what would even happen if he was present to like answer a prayer or like do anything? Well, I probably mean, you do thrive on bondage, so it's probably just as good, right? Yeah, this is just like the cosmic edging, which keeps them on, <laughs> on the top game. <laughs> cosmic uh, edging. I well, mean... I think I I think that brings us to a good place. Yeah, <laughs> we've but, we've brought cosmically... someone to a good place. Yeah, we yeah, cosmically yeah, well, edged ourselves to this cliff. <laughs> I, I really hope that becomes the t- the episode title when you're thinking about editing this, Matt. And it's going to be really funny for Mason, but that's right under the marquee for him. <laughs> <laughs> I can't laugh that loud because it's too late. I got a noise complaint. No. Well, <laughs> that 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 does put the period on the sentence that we've come to a good place. Mm-hmm. Thanks everyone for listening to Always Strikes yeah. Late. Uh, like, subscribe. We've yeah. got merch. Hit the There's bell. Things, There's a bell thing that you yeah. can hit. Uh, on Podbean and YouTube, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Do all the yeah. things. Uh, mm-hmm. If you're so inclined, run the episodes on loop on multiple devices just to make mm-hmm. sure the counts. Right, we do. We, we want to on YouTube expand <laughs> too with our subscriber base as well. To, you know, we hit the thousand subs and get GW's to look mm-hmm. at us or maybe not if the cosmic edging is the thing i mean it's true, it's true but you know perpetually cosmically do. edged by gw mm-hmm. 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 Mm. well we play uh you know the last word game